surprise myself. <laughs> this is actually so cute. I never like to throw anything away, even if it's a little bit damaged and chewed up. Definitely in my case, I have bunnies running around and they love to attack my shoe heels. So I just gathered everything out that I plan to fix. And in this episode, I'm gonna do accessory updates. I'm going to be fixing damage accessories and then making new accessories out of upcycled materials. I have this bag right here, the strap just completely snapped. And then this bag here, I've just used it so much and it's falling apart. I saw this pillowcase at the thrift store and it's so beautiful. It's cross stitched and I think the colors are right in <laughs> my color palette, but I don't really know exactly how I'm going to do it. So I'll have to think on that. And then this bag, got attacked by the bunnies as well, but it's not in the center. So maybe there's a solution to fix that. I have my toolkit here. I always like to have in my sewing studio some jewelry supplies for accessories and bag making. So whenever I'm at thrift stores or garage sales, sometimes you can pick up some fun things like just wooden handles and extra, extra chains. You can also find these cheaply at craft stores that you can prolong the life of accessories that you already have. And I have snaps and all sorts of fun things, but I'm just, I'm not as good as being creative with accessories as I am with clothes. So I think I need a little help from Sadie Fox Metter. She's a contributor to Sew News Magazine. She's hosted a bag sew along course on Sew Daily. And she also has a sustainable series in the magazine as well. And she is so good at upcycling. So she's gonna be the perfect person to kind of chat about what we can do for all these accessory updates and really, how am I going to carry this pillowcase around with me into a fashionable clutch or bag? I don't know, but I'm gonna go get her on the phone and discuss ideas. It's gonna be so much fun. Hi, Sadie, thanks for answering my call. Hi, Meg, how are you? I'm so good. Oh, you're, I love your earrings, they match my dress. <laughs> you know, I knew you'd love them. Oh, did you make the them? I did. <gasps> wow, is it what material is that? It is a faux leather. Ooh. It's some findings, like some little, you know, metal bar findings. Oh, that is so fun. Oh, I know there's so many options when it comes to accessories. But before I go into too many making new accessories, I need to do some repairs on ones that I have that I, I know you have pets. Do they chew up your shoes at all? Have they ever done that? Yeah, when they were puppies, for sure. Oh. Well, I don't think my rabbits ever grow out of puppy face because they are always <laughs> chewing on shoes. And so I have these really nice pair of leather slides. You can see that heel there. Yeah. I mean, yep. I, I tried the permanent marker trick first, but it's still so noticeable. Do you have any ideas of how I can conceal that? I don't want to throw them away. No, they look like great shoes. I would, you know, what about some glitter you could like put uh, <gasps> glue on the heel and then glitter them or decoupage with some cool oh, fabric i didn't think about that i had some pearls i was gonna glue onto yeah. them which, which could work but i never thought about glitter so i could glue it and then shake some yeah. glitter on <gasps> wow okay that <laughs> i'm that is that is what i'm going to do because that is so fun and, and then that makes it really fancy Yes, and knowing me, just the bunnies might even chew off the pearls. So. <laughs> and then I wanted to get your advice on, I have another pair of shoes too. Um, they're all chewed up in the heel. They love the heels. Oh, bummer, and, yeah. And I have this wood grain duct tape. Have you ever worked to, have, would that work for this? I think it would totally work. I've never done it, but that is a fantastic idea. I love it. Yeah, I went into my husband's uh, woodworking portion of our loft and I found this and I thought That's I brilliant. could just, I could just wrap the shoe. Oh yeah, look at that, it covers it. It totally covers it. 
Oh, that looks brand new. Oh, that is fun. I'll get back to that later. So many fun things that you can do with like duct tape. Oh yeah, and that would even protect it from from later. Look at that. Ah! That looks fantastic. Okay, so that's good. I got your advice on those. Oh yeah, this one's really <laughs> beat up. <laughs> Those bad bunnies. <laughs> I know, those bad bunnies. And I have a question. So this little purse, it's all, they chewed up and frayed this entire edge. What would your advice be of concealing this edge? Should I just... Could you bind it? Could you somehow like get some fancy binding and, and run it along the edge? Oh, binding could work. Like actually sandwiching some binding through that. I could. Yeah. I could maybe even take it around the entire thing. Yeah, oh, that that's could a be good really idea. Cool. And oh. they make some really fancy, you know, you can get blingy kind of gold binding that would be oh. so pretty. Oh, it would gold? match. Yeah, or silver. I can't tell what your chain is, but if you match. Yeah, it's gold. Metal. Yeah. So oh. if you did some like gold binding, I think that could look really, it'd almost make it look, you know, designer, intentional. Yes. I know. I was thinking fabric paint but the the texture is so choppy that it might just flake off so binding is a really good idea i didn't even think of that okay after this call i'm gonna put sticky notes on everything and for so i can remember for my weekend project and speaking of chains um do your straps ever break off your purses i just bought this like chain and can you you can just like totally hook on a new chain and absolutely reuse your bag like oh, that. that's cute. Yeah, yes. done. I think that was the quickest upcycle. <laughs> okay, I glad that's I got my your... favorite kind. Yes. Okay, I really need your help. I know you are a bag expert, and I know that you love to upcycle. So I'm glad I got the the go ahead on my my shoes and bag fixes. But I want to make something new. So I have these wooden handles. I think I can use them. But I got this pillowcase at the thrift store. Look how fun that is. The score. Yes. And I know you are so good with upcycling bags. Do, do you have, can you inspire me at all? Do you have any ideas or bags that you've made out of not bag materials? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's one. This is this was a placemat. That was a placemat? That was a placemat and I added a magnetic snap and just <gasps> it was so simple. I just did some lining and stitched up the sides, put a snap, super fast and easy. And now oh. it's like a clutch. <gasps> oh, that's fabulous. Oh, that's a good idea. And this was a leather skirt and I just made it into a tote. Oh. And then made a little upcycle tassel, but it's super easy, lined it, boxed to the corners and it actually still has like the back seam. That wow. was the back seam of the skirt. Um, the zipper was like here and I just chopped off the top and boxed the bottom. So super, super simple. Wow. I wouldn't, I've only thought of, you know, you hear of all the jeans into bags, but a leather skirt into a bag is, and like, that's so like luxe. It's such a good yeah, use. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it, this was my mom's skirt, but you yeah. can find them at the thrift store. Like, yeah. It, they're so easy to find. I know, especially, I think I have a, definitely a leather skirt that doesn't fit me anymore, but I don't, you know, I can reuse that right. leather. <laughs> you throw it away, you have to save the leather. Oh, for of sure. course. Yeah, and then a long time ago, I made some cowhide chairs from a cowhide rug, but the scrap <gasps> tote. Cowhide tote, wow. And I lined it with like a linen mm. with pockets and stuff, but, the, and these are just um, some handles that, were in my stash, but they're like, you know, fake leather handles. Oh, super wow. Simple. That is amazing. Yeah. I never throw out scraps in this studio and I, I can see that <laughs> you don't as well. Never. Yeah. I love that idea of the placemat, but I think my pillowcase is a little too flimsy because it doesn't have yeah. that stableness. Yeah. Because I was thinking of folding it like this, but it's a little too wide and flimsy. So I'm not really sure. What if you attach it to the corners, those handles that you showed me? Oh, the corners, like a diet. So it's like more of like a, like uh -huh. a hat shape. Oh, that could be the, cool. Yeah, and those cute wood, wood handles you have. Oh, and well, then I could just like insert like there. I'll wrap it around and then oh. stitch on the side. Yes, I could totally do that. 
I always have, I have magnetic snaps right here so I can do those on the inside. Totally elevates it, you know, keeps all your stuff secure on the inside. Oh yes, look at that. I could do that and then maybe even what do you think I could like pleat this in or something? And yeah, it, oh, yeah, oh, look and at a that. box the corner. It's so cute. I could box that corner. Look like that's like one seam, two on here and a snap. And this is done. And that is done. I mean, so I can even matches matches your dress. Yes. <laughs> OK, I'm way too excited about this. Me I too. am going to finish this. I'll make sure to share it with you. Yeah. I wouldn't even have thought of turning it like diagonally. That's amazing. I knew you were the right person to call. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. That was fun. Yeah, that was so much fun. Oh, and if someone else needs inspiration, if they're wanting to do upcycles, where can people find and follow you so they can gain as much insight as I just did? Oh, thanks, Meg. You know, I'm uh, I'm online at Sadie Fox Studio. That's on Instagram, my website. You can find me there. Oh, fabulous. If there's a bunny shoe or bag crisis that I can't solve Hello. again, I'll, I'll call you up. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye, Meg. All right, I have all my supplies. I'm so excited to transform this pillowcase into a clutch. The first thing I'm going to do is insert my snaps because it's going to be folded down like so. I want the snaps to be on the inside, but I don't want them to go through to the right side. So I'm gonna insert the snaps on the corners first before I hand sew those down in place. I'm just gonna push down a little bit, grab my green X-Acto knife and just make some cuts. Be careful with these steps. So I'm just putting my backing on and then just folding those snap edges. Oh yeah, that is not going anywhere. So now that we have our snaps in place, we can just wrap a little bit inside the flat part of the handle. And I'm just gonna do some hand stitches to put this in place because I don't wanna see top stitching on this area and it's really thick with the snap and I don't want to risk breaking a needle or my sewing machine hitting that snap. So I'm just gonna hand stitch that edge down in place. While my pillowcase is open, I'm also just gonna hand stitch this opening closed, just because I don't want anything while I, I am using this as a purse to fall in and get lost. So I'm just gonna quickly whip stitch this opening closed. Need to re-thread my needle for my other handle. I'm just making sure I'm folding down the same amount on each handle. And I'm always double threading this as well. Nice and secure. So now that we have our snaps in and our handles attached, we are going to box the corners as Sadie suggested. So I'm just gonna pinch my other corners right sides together in about, let's say about three or no, two and a half inches in from the corner. I'm just going to pin and I'm just gonna stitch these corners together. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine, stitch these closed and then flip to the right side so we can flip those corners in. And then I'm just going to top stitch right in the ruffle with a white thread, just a little bit, so I'm able to open and close. I say about halfway, and then our bag will be complete. Let's go to the machine.
So now that I stitched the corners of my bag and sewn the tops shut, it gives me enough room to open it up and put stuff in, but it's tight enough against the handles that nothing will fall out and I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I think it is the cutest bag and that was just such a, a good idea of seaming up those corners to get a little bit more structure to the bag. Oh, I just love the way it turned out and I'm just not done crafting yet. I got so many ideas from Sadie, but one that I never really thought of is making my own earrings. And I had the idea for this little bag that I have. I'm actually just going to kind of use the material, the nice kind of textured pleather here, I think will work so nice as earrings. And I think I'm even going to try embroidering them into maybe like a leaf shape or something. So I'm just going to cut away. And actually look at this, this strap can come off. I can use this on another bag. The strap isn't damaged at all. So I will keep this with my other straps. So I'm just going to cut away this material. I mean, let's be honest, this bag was too small anyway. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff. Okay. I'm wondering, if I could even keep that. Maybe I will cut that straight so I can add that to a flap of something else. Cause that should be enough for some earrings. we go. You never know what you could use that for. <laughs> so these can be used as the backing. So I'm going to try hooping this piece of pleather and embroidering some motifs in them. So let me just grab some sticky stabilizer. This one's just a tear away. Making sure to always have two scissors on hand, one for paper, one for fabric. You don't even have to use a in the hoop earring embroidery design. If, if the motif is small enough or as big enough as you want your earring to be, you can just use that. So I'm just going to find the center, kind of center it on here. All right, I'm going to take this to my embroidery machine and have fun embroidering some motifs to make them into dangle earrings. I can't wait to show Sadie too. My machine is all set up for embroidery and I'm just gonna make sure my hoop size is correctly selected. And I'm just gonna go into designs here. And there's so many you can choose from. You could do a flower, you could do a little character. They would be so much fun, but I just want a little small design. I love the small design sections on this machine. There's cute little flowers, but I really like this little teardrop, almost leaf print. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And I'm just going to move it over because we want to embroider two. And so I'm going to duplicate it and just select it far enough away so I have space to kind of cut in between them. So there we go. Now, you know me, I love green. So I think I'm going to change them to a green color. It'll be a nice contrast for my black leather backing. I also have a leather needle installed in my sewing machine. It's not an embroidery needle, but it's to suit the backing. So now I'm just gonna unhoop and remove the backing. Now we don't wanna see all this mess in the back of our earrings, but that looks great. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this in to cover the side. I'm just gonna pin it 
And you shouldn't pin pleather, but since these areas are gonna be not visible, I'm gonna cut around it, it doesn't matter. And then same with this side. I'm just gonna fold it so it at least covers it and pin. And what I'm gonna do is just right beside this outer stitching line, I'm gonna stitch another row of these double stitch. So it's two stitches in one to match that thickness and for it to get nice and secure. And then we're gonna add a little eyelet to the top. So I also switched my thread to black so it would match the backing. And I have my Teflon foot installed and I'm just going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away, just around. It's good that you can barely see it, but now the, it's nice and finished on the back without all that messy stitching. Now I'm going to go to the eyelet stitch and just at the top of each earring, I'm going to stitch an eyelet circle. So now that we have the backing stitched around, I also, while I was at my machine just off camera, I did another little pair and I did the green stitching all along here in a little brown. So that kind of gives you an example. And now I have a nice other neutral pair. And I'm just gonna cut around just following my stitching line, super close, but not through. And then just kind of around the eyelet. So you get a shape that looks like this. And I liked for a different version to actually switch up that outer thread to match the backing. So it's really invisible on the wrong side. But this one's cute too. You just get more green to it. But I like the option. And you can see how fast these came together. Just with these tiny little purse scraps. They're cute embroidered earrings. You can totally embroider leather, pleather, vinyl. So, you have no excuses to throw any tiny bit of scrap away. Now I have these two thread eyelets and I'm just gonna use a little hole puncture and I'm just going to put it in the center. And it hammers through a little hole. Look at that. They are ready to be threaded into earrings. So I'm just gonna grab my little accessories here. This is so much fun. You can thread them on a hoop, or if you don't even have a hole punch, you can totally just glue them to the back of an earring little stick there. But I like to just get these little earrings and just thread them through. So what I do is I just open them And then voila, perfect earring. Oh, how cute is that? There we have it, little pleather embroidered earrings. And you can do so many things. You could do a filled in design. You could do a little pineapple, a little heart. Oh, so many possibilities. And oh, wow. It looks like these match my outfit. Might have to change my earrings. And, oh look, at I have a whole outfit now. Thank you for watching this episode of Style Revive where we really revived all the accessories that were in my to be discarded bin. So join me next time for more fun and to see how I repaired my shoes using Sadie's tips. Head over to SoDaily.com for the dedicated blog post. We'll see you next time, bye.